Okay, what's up everybody? Uh, we're, today we're going back to the game trailers. Yep. I gotta take it easy today. Yeah, and your surgery yesterday. Yeah, I had a... Cody's, I, Cody's being a wuss today, so... <laughs> but I had to get... It, it was a minor thing, it was like a cosmetic type thing, but on my feet. Didn't feel too good, but... Today we're going into some more game trailers. Yeah, we picked five more games. Yes, and we're... Uh, because there were so many games that, that were cool to talk about, that we wanted to show trailers of. So we might do more of this. Keep talking about a capture card. I, uh, I need to be. We'll able get it eventually. I'm gonna try and sell some uh, baseball cards that we bought tons of. So, but the first game we want to talk about yeah. is Borderlands Three. And you know, the first two never really appealed to me much. I didn't play them, but I know a lot of people like the game. Like the first. Well, I know games. people like the game. There is a little controversy surrounding this, and that it had to do with microtransactions, but. I, I don't think we're really going to no, get into that. No, we're going to try and stay today. away from that. J just stuff about the game. We've already done controversy a lot yeah. here lately, so we just want to talk about games yep. here here lately. Or here lately. We just want to talk about games today. Excuse me. So the first one we want to get into, Borderlands 3. Yep. I want to start showing the trailer, so as soon as I say go, you just I'm going to let James just have some uh, commentary. All right. So you ready? Yeah, whenever you are. Go. All right, so I found a, an article. And it was talking about, there's 13 different things in it, and it's talking about some of the different changes from Borderlands 2 to Borderlands 3. Um, now, like I said, I didn't play the first two, so I'm not sure exactly how these are going to affect the gameplay, but one of them is multiple active abilities per character. So in Borderlands 3, every character has three different active abilities. Um, and it depends on the character. Uh, they have augments for the abilities. Um, they have, like, elements associated with them. So it seems like it's super in-depth. And I know, you know, it's an RPG, it's an action RPG. They have tons of guns, and I think yes, they said a yes. billion, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they said a billion guns in the game. Yeah. And so, um, something that it says, which is cool, something called action skills. They're available at level one, so you don't have to, like, go through a bunch of quests to get them. So that's good. Um, another thing is something called slag. I'm not sure what that was. I guess it's kind of like radiation, or it's kind of like a damage effect in the second one going to be replaced with radiation and then they kind of is it like an environmental thing yeah okay so like if you kill an enemy and they have radiation effect on them they explode into an area of effect which damages okay. surrounding enemies okay. they clarified that so that's specifically how it works um no additional vault hunters post launch um so i guess i don't know if those are like classes it has no plans for a new vault. I don't know if that's like a class or a character. It's one of the two. But they're not going to do any of those post post launch. Everything's going to be available when the game first comes. That's out. cool. Um, mantling and moving um, at a gameplay reveal. They were so you, so they're going to be able to climb, um, uh, scale things, and, and navigate the environments better. Um, you're going to do to pl get to do planetary travel, so you're not stuck on one planet now. So space and other planetary travel is what it says. So you're going to be able to get ferried to new places, new worlds. So it's looking like it's going to be a pretty big game. Well, um, there's some pretty cool creatures. You see one right there. There's that kind of look like. Of course, I can't see. Of course, I can't see the trailer. <laughs> Cody's watching that. Yeah, I'm just looking at the trailer. And I know uh, James do some commentary. About I know Claptrap was a character yes. that a lot of people liked. There's going to be a new voice for him. Which probably kind of sucks. I know people liked his voice work. That well, was yeah, there was some game. stuff surrounding that that I'm not going to get into. But. So there's going to be some uh, new voice for that. Um, yeah, okay, it talks about it on here, but I'm not. Yeah, like you said, I'm not going to get into that. So new voice for Claptrap. <laughs> something called badass ranks. I'm not sure what those are, but they're being replaced by something called guardian ranks. Um, I guess it's like tree paths. In terms of challenges okay. and abilities and things like that. So a big customization, yeah, yeah over one million guns. Over, over, um, overhaul. Guns with legs. Uh, uh, loot, instancing, and scaling. So they said the Borderlands 3's new instanced, well, that's a weird word, loot and loot scaling. The idea is that players of all levels can join up, play together without ruining the experience. So it was kind of like the problem that you had in um, Destiny, where you would play some level 1 character and he'd get an epic, you know, some kind of epic gear, and then yeah, you know, that a level 20 character would get like a common. So so it's going to be scaled in terms of your level. Which it should be. Yes. Um, player housing. 
Uh, they're gonna have their own quarters. They can decorate them. Uh, you know, do things with guns in there. And it, some I'm, of the personalizations will change depending on the character you pick. The trailer just ended. So, so, so I'm just gonna kind of go through the rest of it. Yeah, them. let's just. Uh, you want? I just have a couple more. Um, an interactive environment, so you can burn oil, kick barrels, shoot, That's them, cool. make them I explode, do, yeah, things like that. Like that. Uh, secondary fire toggles, so some weapons are going to have alternative, alternative firing modes. Uh, they're going to be like something like, like the gameplay showed off a pistol that can shoot rockets. So cool it, stuff it, like it that. It looks a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of fun. It really does. Now, games are getting so expensive now, just in terms of DLC and things like that. Yeah. That I have to pick and choose. I want to get this game. Because I want both of us to be, because it is co-op. It would be fun to play together, yeah. It, and it does seem like it would be a lot of fun. It has that uh, Walking Dead 2. Who, who made Walking Dead 2? Who made the Walking Dead uh, t Telltale? Telltale. It has Telltale graphics. I, I know Gearbox yeah, yeah, is the has, one that started It has started kind of the, sh the cell shaded graphics, yeah. yeah. Which I like. I like the way those look a lot. Um, but that's Borderlands 3. The co-op, bunch of bunch of customization, bunch of different guns. I think the story, I, I'm not sure how long the story was, but I know there's a, a lot of RPG elements in the game play together. It looks like it's a lot of fun. Um, the last two, just real quick, some, there was a, an ability called Ground Pound. I'm assuming that's something like when you when, when you hit the ground, it, it's like an explosion. And that's going to be uh, for all classes now, not just specific classes. I guess people really like that ability. And then some new enemy names that they're going to be adding in. They're going to change some enemy names around and what okay. they're called. So that was it for Borderlands. Sounds, sounds like a fun game. It sounds like a fun game. Yes. It sounds like something that I'd kind of like to play. I don't pre-order games anymore, just for the simple fact that you never know. You never know anymore. Yep. Um, yep. I'm not saying, well, I don't pre-order games. That's just my preference. Yeah. I used to. I agree with you. With, with the things that have been happening, but if it's a good game, it's not gonna matter. They're, they're still gonna get their money anyway. So now let's go into Star Wars Jedi: The Fallen Order. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And here's the official reveal trailer. And whenever James is ready, I'm going to click the play button. Give me one second, sorry. I was trying to see what other games this company made that's now, making Star Wars. Now, this game looks pretty fun. What did you say the, the story elements were going to be like? Uh, like Naughty Dog, like Uncharted? Where you were going to be able to move around, things like yeah, that? Yeah, the, the, uh, I don't know if that's the specific video that I was watching, but it was. It wasn't gameplay, but it was like cinematic. But I'm assuming you're gonna be able to do it in game, like you're running across walls, jumping and grabbing ledges. Are we ready? Yeah, whenever you are. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, the director of this game is the is the, the man that directed uh, Gears of uh, Gears of War, God of War Three. Yes. Which was a good game. All the I like all the God of War games. Um, something he's talked about is no multiplayer, no microtransactions. No season pass, so it's purely going to be it's a, a story. A story game. So that game. sounds good. Uh, which is what God of War was, so it yes. makes sense. Um, it's being done by Respawn. Uh, Respawn also did. Okay, the two guys that started Respawn, uh, Jason West and Vince and Zampella, I think is how you say his name. They were the co-founders of Infinity Ward, which did the Call of Duty series back in the day. Okay. Right. And uh, Respawn is the one is the company that did Titanfall and Apex Legends. So, kind of a wide variety of games. I mean, I know they're all shooters, but, you know, you had a Battle Royale game, um, Titanfall, which was, I guess, kind of a Battle Royale game, and then Call of Duty, which included a little bit of everything. But I'm trying to see, okay, he, he was talking about how excited he is. There's not a lot of details released about the story. The, the main thing that you know about the story is that it's after Order 66. Right, the Jedi After, after, the, after yeah. the, the Jedi Order fell. Um, so that's all they've really released, except for the stuff in the trailer. There was some cool stuff in the trailer about it was like a, he was like controlling a laser and it was cutting through a star destroyer. Um, but the director talks about coming in, how all of the people in the studio are all excited about it. They're all passionate about the game. That's good. So he's excited coming into work every day. And you know, we talked in some videos before about how some people are feeling awful about coming into some of these jobs with the game developers. So the fact that these people are feeling good is really good. It, it gives you a lot of hope for this game. Um, they picked up people that worked on Uncharted, un Uncharted, so that makes sense. Got, uh, people that have worked on Call God of War, Batman, Bioshock, Metal Gear, Titanfall, Call of Duty. Um, they're going to show a lot more at E3 coming up. Mm -hmm. Let's 
let's see, November 15th is the release date. Um, they were talking about a Nintendo Switch port if anybody plays a Switch. EA said there's no plans to do anything with the Switch right now. And EA is the one doing the game. Um, you know, so it's... Now, regardless of what you feel about EA, um, it could be good. Could I be feel good. like if they let the director do what he wants to do, it's going to be a good game. You know... Talk about Anthem real quick. I, I don't think Anthem was totally EA's fault. I think that was just mismanagement and lack of communication within yeah. Bioware itself. I agree with that. So, I, I don't really think much. I, I don't think EA had a lot to do with that. Now, do I think EA has a bunch of stupid stuff they do? Yes, I do. Yes. And it does worry me that they're making this game because I'm not quite sure they need... If they're going to fund people with things, fine, but they need to trust that these game companies... Yeah, they need to trust the directors and the developers of the games. Yeah, I, I know it's hard to do when you got a bunch of money on the line things like that, but if you keep making mistakes and you keep trying to rip people off, yeah. you're not going to have business anymore. Eventually, I don't care how big you are, if you make that many mistakes, eventually you will lose. The good thing about this That's, game is it seems to have... I'm sure it's going to have some DLC, you know, some extra missions mm -hmm. and things like that, which I don't mind. That's Well, fine. that's fine. The good thing the director said is he doesn't want any multiplayer, which will mean no microtransactions okay. and uh, no season pass type stuff. So it's just the a director seems like he's definitely in the in the right here. He's going to do things the right way. It's a pure story game. Yeah. And you know what I will say about that? The Witcher did have DLC, but it was a pure story game. It was game. worth DLC. It was DLC that was worth the money. Now, did Mass Effect have multiplayer later on in 3 and Andromeda? Yeah. Yes, it did, but... They were strictly... It wasn't the key aspect of the game. They were, they, well, in Mass Effect 3, people were upset because there was a tie-in. And you know what stinks now? True. You can't go back. And James, play you, you you're really right. can't go back and play it because yeah, nobody's going to be online. You're not wrong. So that tie-in right there is a little... You're actually right. You know, I was... I, uh, I have an old PlayStation 3 in my house, and I bought the, the trilogy just to play through again. And you're all right. You, you can't... There's nothing you can do now. You, that you would have in. to go back on the lower levels and grind and grind and grind yeah. and grind. And it, it would... The only positive thing I'll say about it is they made it to where you don't have to play multiplayer to get no, but the, only, the main ending. That's the only point. Right. The, the, only point I, the only point I was getting at is that single-player games, story-driven games, did not even really single-player, just story-driven games, yeah. Yeah. people love them. Yeah. And they go down in history some of the best games ever made. Mm -hmm. So let's get into Skull and Bones. Now, Skull and Bones did get delayed again. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. I thought you started it. Made by Ubisoft. Made by Ubisoft. Actually, two of the games. We're going to talk about another game made by Ubisoft. But um, it, it did get delayed again to 2020. Uh, I don't think... They, they announced they're not going to have anything at E3 for it this year. The only thing about that is... If they're wanting to make a quality, high-quality, good game... It doesn't bother me that much that they're pushing it back. Um, so it's going to be... Uh, a tactical action video game. It's going to be based around piracy and naval warfare. Obviously, it's, it's a pirate game. Uh, no release date yet, obviously, because they got pushed back. So, I mean, even 2020 is not guaranteed. Um, so, it's, it was built on the Black Flag style of gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, Assassin's Creed, Black Flag. Which I'm really excited about. But it's going to be, you know, mainly all completely on the pirate angle. So, it's all going to be based off of. You know, ship combat and things like that. Yeah, and, and, and the pirate combat in in Black Flag was really good. Yes, the it ship, was. The ship combat was really good. Uh, obviously, you're going to have a custom-made captain. Um, Come on, no. Nope. Based in the Indian Ocean. I hope there's no like not tons of blood in this. It's going to be based in the Indian Ocean. I actually kind of wish they would have based it in the Caribbean, but um, uh, it's going to be a single-player narrative. The stories will also have a multiplayer narrative in the form of its disputed waters game mode. So in that mode, players are going to take on the role of two different groups of pirates that are looking to salvage cargo in disputed parts of the Indian Ocean. Uh, it's played in third person. Okay, they yeah, said there's going to be that. massive naval battles in it. So more than one ship, or two ships. Um, you're going to have to be able to get additional ships, sloops, uh, frigates, brigantines, things like that. Uh, you're going to have mortars, broadside cannons, rockets even. I'm sure there's going to be ship-to-ship -ship combat too. Yeah, where you board and... Uh, yeah, where you board and, and take ships over. It doesn't say that, but I'm, I'm assuming... They just showed some gameplay like okay. that, face-to-face -face combat. Uh, hunting for treasure is going to be big, obviously, as a pirate-themed game. The multiplayer mode, Loot Hunt, 
is a core component. So that's where you treasure hunt to get more and more money. Build a fleet, uh, build trade routes, legendary AI captains, and other players. So it's going to be a mix of both. Wait, you said you can get loot and get legendary captains out of the loot? No, no. Like, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't say that the right way. In the game, there's going to be legendary AI captains that are that are okay. just AI captains. So like Blackbeard and things like that, and other players. So it's going to be a combination. So you don't really ever know what you're coming up and on. Kid and which is real. Yeah, yeah. Which is real life. Which is like real life. If you were a pirate, you wouldn't know what ship you're coming up on. And Bonnie. And Bonnie. Freaking <laughs> Bonnie, man. She's my favorite. Favorite. I remember Black Sails were. It's a show that we watched back in the day that was really good. But uh, that's really all there is about it right now. They, they haven't released much else. You know I ate candy while we were talking. Like an <laughs> idiot. It kind of sucks that it's getting pushed back, but if they're doing it to make the gameplay better, it doesn't bother me. There's a couple things I'm worried about. Ubisoft has a bunch of stuff coming out right now. They do. They got, and I wanted to do a trailer of this and talk about it. The new Ghost Recon coming out. Yeah. Right point. I think I'm pretty sure it's. I think that's what it's called. One of my favorite actors of all time, John Bernthal. John Bernthal, man. Uh, the Punisher series he was just in was unbelievable. He was in The Walking Dead, but you know that's coming out. Ubisoft is working on that. Yeah. They're working on Beyond Good and Evil Two. I think they said they want to release four AAA titles this year. That's a lot. That's in one a year. lot. That's man. a lot in one year. Now, how long have they been working on these? We don't really know. They could have been in production for a long time. And, and also what I want to say about that is some Ubisoft games, just like the Assassin's Creed, eventually they get a little tedious because they do have a lot of tasks that you grindy really do. Type, yeah, grindy type tasks. And I, I just hope it doesn't get like this. I hope there's like a bunch of variety. That may be why this is being pushed back. They may be trying to put a bunch of variety in this. Now, if yep. that's the case... Doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother me. And I know Ubisoft, they do come out with some pretty good games. Oh, yeah. So... Check for Bob up there, man. Oh, Bob, don't fall over, Bob. But the next game I want to talk about... It's one of yours that you're really looking this for. This is... I, I'm waiting for this game. Yeah. Now, I, I really... Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal. I can't wait to play this. Now, did you pre-order that one? That is one you pre-ordered. No, I don't pre-order. You pre-order pre that? Okay. I couldn't remember if you did or not. I want to so bad, but like, I can't, man. I, I can't. I didn't know if you had or not. I have to stick to that. I, I have to stop doing that. Because pre-orders, I don't know what they're going to do anymore. The game could turn out to be just absolute BS. And I don't think these games will be, but you never know anymore. Did you, should we just get into it? You ready? Yeah. Let's get into Doom Eternal. Tell me, no, when, tell me when you're ready. I'm going. This is the Doom. This is the trailer. Okay. This isn't the gameplay. Yeah. I really want to look at some... You know what? Maybe we'll do that next Friday. Look at some gameplay. Yeah. Of uh, some games. Yeah, we can both look at it and kind of comment over it. And we can pick, you know, we can pick one or two games yeah. and just go, look at this. Look at this, man. So. There's the spider. You want to get into this list I got over here? Yeah. So I got a list of, uh, it's going to be ten things, kind of cool cool new things in the game. Now, is it New Earth? New locations. Now, okay. uh, yeah, they said, right. like right. Doom 2 from 94. Yes. Doom Eternal is expected to take place, at least in part, but if not, mostly on Earth. Uh, the demon hordes overrun the planet, and then it's up to you to fight them off. Uh, they've also shown, um, this is kind of cool, new locations in hell where you may fight. Uh, and then things that delve like deep into doom lore. There is, man. I wanted to read the, uh, the books for a while. There's books out there that I've been wanting to read. Doom Slayer. So they wanted to create kind of a doom universe. That's what they wanted to do in this game. So, it, and then it kind of goes into the guns, uh, big guns you're going to have. Uh, this is some gameplay footage. <laughs> he, <laughs> uh, Marty Stratton, I'm not sure who, uh, he has to be, he's associated with the game somehow. He said that the essence of the Doom franchise was killing badass demons with big guns. That's what he said. I'll just play another trailer while you're talking. Um, now, oh, that, this is dangerous, because this, this have, might have blood in it. Just, just go with okay. that. So it kind of talks about the guns there. It doesn't really say much else about them. Uh, there's something called the Super Shotgun. I wish I could show you these pictures on here. Uh, it looks really cool. So there's this thing called the Meat Hook. Attached to the bottom of the shotgun that shoots out and grabs things. And yes, and into the shotgun yes. so you can shoot them. There's a lot of 
more accessibility and variety of movement. Well, I gotta uh, be really careful what I show. The because... ballista is a chargeable energy weapon. Uh, bolts of plasma. Well, I guess it is kind of going into something. That's, that's cool. You have a shoulder-mounted flamethrower. Yes. That shoots fire as you shoot a gun. Uh, okay, new and improved enemies. Uh, it features uh, new versions of classic enemies. Um, some new original enemies that have been developed exclusively for this game. The Arachnotron is a smaller version of the Spider Mastermind from Doom 2016. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you remember mm -hmm. that. Was that a boss? Mm -hmm. So there are smaller versions of that. Um, remember Olivia? She turned into that. Damn, that's, damn okay, boss. that's right. Uh, both the Pain Elemental and Arc Vial from Doom 2 return with more arms and armor. Uh, it boasts twice as many enemies as Doom 2016. Um, There's Bobos. Some of the new, more, uh, some of the more interesting enemies include the Arch Enemy of the Slayer and the Marauder. When you get Arteno and get on Phobos, man, it's got an overrun. <laughs> that was a Warframe reference. Oh my, I wish I could show you these pictures of these two enemies. This one is like a skull with these huge horns that has a giant red axe that he's carrying on called the Marauder. And this other one is like a machine. It looks like a tank on the bottom, but it has a huge rocket launcher and a big, huge, like, chainsaw arm on its left arm. That's really cool looking. Uh, improved demon destruction, so the animations of the deaths. We're not monetized right now anyway. I'm just going to let this play. <laughs> the animations of the deaths and things like that are, uh, there's some new stuff. Uh, wall climbing is a new feature, um, which is pretty self-explanatory. Something called invasion mode. It's a new multiplayer mode called Invasion. Players will be able to form squads of demons to hunt down the Doom Slayer in a separate campaign mode. Yes, yes. You can play as demons. Uh, according to developers at Bethesda, this will essentially allow online gamers to jump into each other's yep. campaign and wreak havoc. That's really cool. The concept of playing as a demon is intriguing enough, but the idea of invading someone else's campaign is truly revolutionary. It's it really is. That's not anything you've really ever heard before. It's similar to the Dark Souls thing where you can invade somebody's like, game as yeah, a yeah. on. That's really cool. That's a really cool feature. I like that. You know, I think you get... Uh, the lives system. Yeah, there's the hook that uh, we just talked about. One of the blinking you'll miss at moments of the Doom Eternal presentation was the introduction of the extra life notification. Uh, extra life functions as a mobile checkpoint. So if you die in, in, in battle, your extra life will kick in and it restores you at that moment rather than forcing you to go all the way back to your previous checkpoint. Sorry, excuse me. The Crucible Blade. Okay, from the original game. Uh, as you went down Legions of Demons with the wide and wonderful arsenal weapons. Not the original, but from the previous you game. You may come to a point where you run out of ammo. Uh, he has a sword called the Crucible Blade. That you got from the last game. That was the very end of the game. You remember when, uh, I can't remember his name. I can't even remember. The right. idiot robot that came in. I didn't even play it all the way through. That's right, you didn't. Uh, that, it was one of my favorite games. I've the played. Wrist Blade. So, like, if something comes up close to you, you have right, a blade right. on your wrist that you can pull out and fight with. And then finally, uh, the last the feature, game. Glory Kills. Yes. There's the little uh, arach Arachnotrons, is that what you call them? Yeah, Arachnotrons. Uh, so obviously there's going to be some new uh, Glory Kill animations. They're wanting to improve those too. They're bringing some guns back. There's the M60, the assault rifle. And they're going to include gun and melee gl uh, Glory Kills. So. That was it. That was the list there. I'm just going to, and we just talked about the game. I'm going to talk a little bit more until this. Uh, yeah, definitely want you to talk about it because you're the one that's really looking forward to the, it. The end of the Phobos trailer. The gameplay on Phobos. This is where the main demon comes out. Well, it looks like for this area. I, I don't know if it's a boss or a mini boss, but. And again, like I said, I'm just going to let this play. I know there's a bunch of blood in it, but whatever. Uh, th this game I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. Mainly because just Doom itself, I always found it cool to just go around and just kill a bunch of demons. Different weapons, a uh, bunch of carnage all the time, high action. The glory kills are really cool. I don't... Were there ever glory kills in Doom before? I don't think there were. I don't uh, think so. No, I think they added that in for the new Doom. But this is like a full reboot now. There's the uh, flame cannon on your shoulder, kind of like the Predator. And, of course, you can shoot rockets out of it, too, but... You know, this is like a full reboot, I guess, because Doom 1, it was kind of like the original Doom. Yeah. And now they're following the same aspect where you go into Doom 2 yeah, and you're on Earth. Earth. 
Yep. Now, I think this is like full out, I mean, this pretty much confirms it. You're on various locations. Yeah. You're not just on Earth. I think on the original, on the original Dooms, the, the first Doom, I think you were in Hell. I can't remember. can't actually remember. I think, I think you went down into Hell. Uh, in Doom 2, I think it was mainly based on Earth where they invaded Earth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section. I, I'm pretty sure, but it's been so long since I've played it. And you're get, he's the Doom Slayer's getting ready to come up on the. Uh, I think it's the main boss here in this level. You got a bunch of different weapons. It seems like this game was a lot more fast paced than the first one was. Now the first one was fast paced. The only thing that took that away is with the weapon wheel when it. You know when you can bring the weapon wheel up. Yeah. I think there was an option where you could take that away. And I'm sorry I can't play the music. I just don't want to. Sometimes you get a copyright strike. Sometimes if people claim it, you get upset. I don't want to take a chance on that. I do want to provide a commentary for this. That looks unbelievable. So you gonna pull the? Yep. There's a crucible blade. That game looks unreal, man. I'm. I'm I'm ready for that to come out. And did you say Bethesda? Bethesda still makes Bethesda, something. Yeah. I know they struggled with Fallout 76. That was just a bit big mess. I don't know what happened there. I'm not going to show this trailer. That that was enough to talk about. But I, that's a game I'm really excited for. Now a game you're excited for that you you played when you were young, okay. Beyond Good and Evil. Came out in 2003, the first one. And I remember we had to cut there because the time was getting yeah, a little off. Yeah. So here we go again. Yeah. Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yeah. All right. So the first one was kind of a cult classic. It was a game that not a lot of people knew about when it first came out. And then as the game gained some life, people started uh, looking at it more. It was a mm -hmm. great game. It was kind of based around stealth and um, espionage. It was like an espionage game, which was really cool. Kind of like Splinter Cell, which I'm not. I never really played the Splinter Cell games. But um, there's not a lot that's been released on this. Okay, that's somebody's phone. It's probably my phone. Ubisoft, right? That yes. Was making it? Yes. Ubisoft is making it. Uh, this is another one of the games they were talking about maybe coming out this year. There's Paige. Paige. I love Paige. That's the pig. I don't know if anybody, if anybody watching this ever played it, you know who Paige is. But he's like your uncle. But uh, <laughs> you play as Jade. I'm assuming she's going to be the main character in this game. And the government is like a... It's like an alien race, but they hide themselves as human. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, Titan AE. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. But it's an alien race, and they hide themselves as human, and they're, they're controlling everything. And you have to kind of go underground, sneak into their bases. They have different traps. Like I said, it's like an espionage game. You take pictures as like a reporter. You do. There is some fighting in it, though. There's action in it. Um, but they had. There was a great blend of action and, and stealth. Um, super fun story. The characters are all really cool. I was getting ready to say, the, the characters and the story seem like it makes this game. It, it is. It is. Um, the Ubisoft CEO implied in a recent interview that there's a, there's a chance they're going to take it in another direction. They're just not sure what they're going to do with it yet. He was talking to the uh, creative director of Beyond Good and Evil 2. So, is it close to coming out? Is it going to come out this year? It's hard to say. I know we've been waiting on a sequel for this game since, you know, 2003. Kind of like how long it took for Kingdom Hearts 3 to come out. Mm -hmm. I waited on that game for oh, so long. But I'm um, definitely looking forward to the sequel when it comes out. Uh, I know the uh, you're showing the trailer now. I know a lot of the footage I've seen, the, the graphics look unbelievable on it. So I don't know if maybe... I'm going to put it this way. If it doesn't come out this year, I think Ubisoft will wait until the next generation of consoles before they come out with the game. They'll take their time on it and make it a really good game. And some of these might be... True. True. I'm not sure really what else to say about it. Uh, that was pretty much all this was getting into was about him talking to the uh, creative director of the game um, to see where it was going. Let me see. Let me see if I can find anything else about it. Sorry, I'm not quiet right now. No, well, it just showed. Oh, wow. There's a giant alien ship that just came out. And just grab their ship with everybody on it. See, like in the original, you even went, the, the last mission, you went to the moon, because that's where their base was at, which was really cool. You know, 
something I noticed trying to find news stories for this. I'm not going to get into it, but they were talking about it. I guess some of the game companies said that they don't want to do political stuff anymore, and Ubisoft was one of the big ones on that, and it was talking about how are they going to make Beyond Good and Evil 2 if they can't get political. The original game was political, but it was political in the aspect of within that universe it was political. Yeah, see... It didn't of, get into real-life politics. I have... Game journalists seem to have it out for gamers in general because they want them to be political. I don't, and, I don't get it. And I, people that play games like me and you, I'm starting to get to the point where I can't stand game journalists. Because they said, how are they going to get political? They made it sound like they're talking about our politics. How do our politics fit in to that universe? Here's my thing. you got a talking pig. So are people really going to care about race and agendas and politics and that? Especially I mean, are you gonna in a care? game like that, you have pigs and, and, what pig I just said. and hippos running around. I mean... You know, That's on. what I'm talking about. I mean, get off I mean, get off of it. Grow up. Says the person playing games. Yeah, but here's here's my point to that. You can enjoy this stuff. You can be a nerd and enjoy this stuff without being a weirdo. You can. And I want to tell people that, you know what? There's nothing cooler than people who are confident in themselves and what they like to do. Yep than people who are insecure about, like, game journalists, about what they believe, yeah. and want to come out and force people to do things. Yeah. So, you know what, just be confident in you. And even those game journalists, if those are political beliefs, fine. Yeah, that's your beliefs. But don't get mad and go in some outrage mode because people tell you that they disagree with you. Fine. Or they just don't want to hear it. That's what people like, that's what people disagree. You know what, it's okay to disagree. And it's okay to like these things. And if you do disagree with us and you do like these things, leave it in the comment section down below and leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. Just <laughs> seriously though, just like and uh, subscribe to our channel. Definitely. That was it for our gameplay trailers. We're going to talk yeah. about five again. We might do five more. What I kind of want to do. There's so many good games, you know. There's so many good games. If we can find a real. Well, E3 is in June, so we're definitely going to talk about E3. We'll do that again, when it comes yes. Out. And what we want to get into more is some gameplay, stuff like that. We yeah. want to. I kind of want to, like, step back from the controversy if we can. Yeah, as much as possible. I mean, we'll still talk about some of that stuff. I might just jump on it and just buy the capture card. I can't really... I don't know. We'll see. I still want to... I'm, I'm still, you know, working to beat Kingdom Hearts 3. I need to get back on there and beat it, and then I can do a review of that when it's done. You need to beat... Uh, what game was it you don't want to do a review for? Mortal Kombat 11? Mortal Kombat 11. I already beat it. You beat it, it but... You want to do a review for it because i put so much criticism on it i do want to review it yeah. and tell people how good of a game it is yeah but that was i mean that was warframe's a game we play a lot we'd like yes to talk about I, that I want more. to do if we can get that's a game i want to stream yeah it would be fun to stream because we play that so much yes and that's a continuous game i would want to stream that game and just get on and have a conversation with people yeah. anyway guys before we just keep going <laughs> this game this is going to be like well it's 30 minutes long but we already said like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for us. Yeah. Uh, social media is going to be down in the description below. And thank you all for watching. Yeah, man. Finger got stuck again. Let's fix it. He broke himself. <laughs>